Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we are going to take a look at the Willow game, designed by Greg Kostikin and produced by Tor Books. This is an adventure game following the story of the Willow movie, which was one of my favorites as a kid, and admittedly as an adult as well. Inside the box you get an instruction booklet written in the 7.2.a style of the 80s, a game board, six character cards and their standees, two pawns, 144 cards and a card display, and of course, two dice. There are a lot of little rules in the game, and I won't go into all of them, but we'll take a look at the game as a whole. The players are basically fighting for control of Alora Dannon, the baby who is prophesied to be the downfall of the evil Bev Morda. The good guys win if they can free Tyrus Lean and get Alora Dannon there, or if they can get to Nokmar Castle and slay Bev Morda. The evil characters win if they can capture Alora Dannon, bring her to Nokmar Castle, and fend off the good characters from killing Bev Morda for an additional turn. The game conflicts are resolved by checks against stats by rolling dice. Fighting is a prowess check, casting a spell is a magic check, searching is a stealth check, and so on. The board is broken out into spaces, roads, rivers, and places of power. Seven of the places of power offer a treasure to the good characters and a special ability usable once per game per character. There is also Nokmar Castle, which is a place of power for the bad guys. The good places of power must be found before moving into them by making a stealth check against the space's hide rating. Roll for the character and add it to their stealth, then roll for the space and add it to the hide. If the character is higher than the space is high, the place is found and can be moved into. Encounter cards are the meat of the game. There are some cards that can only be used by good characters, and some that can only be used by bad characters. There are foes which the bad characters may play on good characters, spells, equipment, and most may be played at any time. Black cards are placed in front of a character and don't count against their hand limit. Red cards are also placed in front of a character but do count against the hand limit. Blue cards are played and discarded immediately. Remember, only good characters can play good cards and only evil characters can play evil cards. Treasure cards do a number of things, but the important one is Finn Rizel, the good sorceress who teaches Willow how to use transformation. If a character uncovers her treasure card, they immediately get her card and the transformation spell. She comes into the game transformed into a possum. Evil characters may never take treasure cards. To set up the game, shuffle the treasure cards and put them face down in the seven places of power. Then each player picks which characters they will play depending on the number of players. The character standees then go on their starting spaces and the characters get their starting goods. Willow starts the game with Alora Dannon, whom his kids found floating in the river. Set the transformation and encounter cards on their spaces on the display. Deal four cards to the good characters, six to the evil, and play is ready to begin. The turns go in order like this. First, each good character will take their turn. They draw a single card. Good characters have a hand limit of five. If they have five cards, they still draw one and then choose one to discard. Fight foes if there's a foe on their card by performing a prowess check against that card. Move up to two spaces and search. Heal one point of health if they moved or fought a foe, or two points if they did neither. Fight evil characters if they're on the same space. And finally, take treasures if they are in a place of power with a treasure card still in it. Then the evil characters get their turns. They draw two encounter cards. The evil characters have a hand limit of seven. Move up to two spaces and search, heal, and fight good characters. For an evil character to fight the good character, they first have to find them by doing a stealth check. If the evil character wins the check, they find the good character. Fights only take place if characters of opposing sides are on a single space and involve all characters on that space. They then go like this. First, characters on the same side may trade or discard cards. Next, the characters may cast spells back and forth, starting with the character who initiated the fight. To cast the spell, declare you are casting it, then perform a check. Roll a die and add that to your magic, then roll for the spell and add it to the spell number. If your magic is higher, you successfully cast the spell. If you fail, move your magic indicator up one. Then each side chooses a champion. If there is only one character on a side, that character is the champion by default. The champions then have a prowess check. The loser takes damage equal to the difference between the two prowess totals. If a character's health is reduced to zero by a fight or is transformed by a transformation spell, the victor gets all of the cards in their hand and any red cards in front of them. This includes the Alora Dannon card. If a character's health is reduced to zero by a foe or a transformation card, they discard their hands and any red cards in front of them, but keep the Alora Dannon card if they have it. Like I said, there are other rules and there's more going on, like Sorsha becoming a good character if she and Mad Mardigan ever fall in love, but the basic flow of the game is each side takes their turn, evil trying to zero in on Alora Dannon in order to kidnap her, 
and good trying to keep her safe while freeing Tyrus Lane by bringing the scepter, which is a treasure, into the city and having a prowess check against it, or getting strong enough with magic to fight Babmorda in a magic duel, trying to best her 14 magic and 6 health. Whoever can compete their goal first is the winner. And that's the Willow game. It's a pretty clunky experience, especially at first, trying to keep all of the little rules in place and rolling dice for everything you want to do, but it brings the story of the movie nicely to the table. The good characters seem to have a de decent advantage, which again fits with the movie. The components are standard 80 sphere, and I guess the game as a whole is as well, but it certainly does its job thematically and induces many movie quotes while playing. The bones have spoken. 